Good afternoon all. My name is Kenny Singh. Following on from our last webinar where we discussed identity and access management and information protection. In today's webinar, we're going to be talking about threat protection and intelligence security management. So as we discussed the last time, there are four security areas that basically comprise the end-to-end -end security story at Microsoft. These areas are identity and access management, threat protection, information protection, and intelligence security management. In our previous session, uh, we went into a lot of depth on identity and access management and information protection. And in this session, we're actually going to be focusing on threat protection and intelligence security management. We'll start with threat protection first. We'll go into a lot of detail of the different capabilities across quite a few different areas of threat protection. And then we'll go into intelligence security management and we'll do the same thing. We'll describe the technologies in the context of the different areas and scenarios. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with the intelligence security graph. We briefly discussed the intelligence security graph in the previous session. So I'll just do a little recap here. The intelligence security graph is a massive, massive data warehouse that Microsoft has that basically captures broad and deep signals on security from across the globe. It captures intelligence from over 450 billion authentications per month, that is, um, more than 400 billion email scans um, in a month, um, over a billion devices scanned, and intelligence from a whole raft of sources, including law enforcement, our own digital crimes unit for botnet data, um, our own teams in security researchers and hunters and so on and so forth. So suffice it to say, it actually has a massive, massive repository of um, uh, security-related data and intelligence from across the globe. So the reason why the Microsoft value proposition around threat protection and intelligence security management is such a compelling value proposition is because with both these areas, as we do with identity and access management and information protection, we actually build on our strengths. And these the, 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 the various components of strength are in billions and billions of signals that we actually have in the intelligence security graph. So all that intelligence, global intelligence, that's basically a mishmash of um, um, human collected data plus machine, machine learning and system data. The fact that we actually have all our platforms integrated into that intelligence. So, for example, Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection draws off the intelligence security graph. So does Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection, and so does Azure Advanced Threat Protection and Advanced Threat Analytics. And finally, the fact that Microsoft is one of the global leaders in machine learning and artificial intelligence, and we actually bring all the research and all the investments we're actually making in machine learning and artificial intelligence to our security story. So when you actually put these three components together, we feel we're actually building on our strengths uh, in terms of delivering a very, very powerful threat protection story and intelligence security management story. And that's why it's a very unique offering in the industry. So on this slide, we're actually going to talk about some of the key customer challenges. So before we actually start discussing the technologies that basically comprise the Microsoft threat protection landscape, what are some of the key challenges that customers are actually facing today? One of the first key challenges is that because of the advent of the cloud and the themes of bring, bring your own devices, mobility, you know, lots and lots of different devices, lots and lots of different locations where users actually work from, there's some advanced attacks that have actually become possible that were actually not possible before. So that's the challenge customers actually have today. Um, which is all the advanced cyber attacks that we've been seeing over the last 12 to 18 months um, now with the customer's data and devices being all over the place and not necessarily in the customer's premises in their, under their direct control. They're actually now subject to these advanced attacks as well. The second challenge our customers actually have today is that they can't 
uh, efficiently detect malicious activity because the attacks have actually gotten so sophisticated. How do our customers ensure that once the attacker actually makes it into their network and into their devices and apps and data, that attack vector is actually detected as quickly as possible. So that's the second significant challenge our customers have today. And then the final challenge um, that the customers actually have today is that once that attack is detected, how do they actually, in a very timely manner, respond to these attacks to minimize the damage caused from the attacks and to basically limit the extent that the attack is actually able to expand to? And what do these challenges really mean? What these basically mean, what these challenges basically mean is that our customers today are actually vulnerable across devices, apps, data, and infrastructure. So any threat protection solution that's basically put in place in a customer environment that offers holistic end-to-end -end protection against threats in this very advanced attack scenario, attack world that we actually exist in today, has to take into consideration a strategy that basically extends across devices, apps, data, and infrastructure. So that actually brings us to what really were our goals for threat protection when we actually set out on journey to create a very holistic or holistic offering for threat protection. So one of the first goals we actually had was in line with the challenges that our customers are facing today, protect against advanced cyber attacks. So how do we actually ensure that no matter what vector the attack comes from or is executed from, we have strategies in place and tools in place to actually protect our customers against those different attacks. The second goal we actually had was how do we detect an attack when it actually happens? How do we detect suspicious behavior? To detect an attack, basically, you actually have to detect any anomalies in your network, any suspicious behavior that might actually be executing in your network. So how do we actually detect against them? And then once you've actually detected the attack, how do we quickly respond to that attack in a very timely manner to minimize damage as much as possible? So here, we've actually listed some of the different attack vectors that we're actually protecting against. So what does a vector really mean yeah, in this sense, in, in the context that we're actually talking about right now? So vector basically means that these are all the different dimensions, so these are all the different areas that an attacker can actually compromise to basically jeopardize the security of an organization, right? So let's let's just very quickly look at these vectors, and then in subsequent slides, we'll actually go a lot deeper into each of these vectors. So one of the first vectors is identity. Um, we, we talked at length in our last conversation, in the last webinar, about identity actually being the new control plane and be protecting at the front door. So the identity vector compromised basically means that your user credentials or the credentials of users inside a customer's environment have basically been compromised in one shape or form. So that's what we actually mean when we say protecting the identity vector. And we'll actually give you the technologies that are associated to protecting, protecting this specific vector. So then the next vector we actually have is the apps and data. So the apps and data vector is all about ensuring that when emails or when data flows into the organization or is created in the, in the organization, that those, those apps and that data is actually protected at all times. Malware, phishing attacks, they all fall under the category of um, apps and data vector. Although when a phishing attack is executed and the credentials are actually compromised, then that would actually fall under the identity vector category. The next, the next vector is the device vector. So th this has actually been in existence for a very long time. So typically hackers have actually gotten into environments by compromising devices. That's actually been a very popular attack vector. So we actually give you quite comprehensive protection against that vector as well, or on that vector as well. And then finally, 
the fourth vector is the infrastructure vector. So how do we actually ensure that in this world where we have hybrid environments, so we have on-premise, on-premises VMs and infrastructure and networks and so on and so forth, and then we actually have VMs and networks in the cloud, and then we actually have uh, an orchestration of uh, resources distributed in hybrid environments across Azure and on-premises and, um, you know, private clouds and so on and so forth. How do we actually ensure that in, in this hybrid world, the, the infrastructure vector is actually protected at all times? So, so let's start with identity protection. So let's start with the identity factor first. So what do we actually give you in the way of um, protection at that identity vector space to keep the hackers out? So some of the core capabilities that we briefly touched on in the last webinar that I'll actually quickly whiz past in this one, uh, multi-factor authentication. So you can actually deploy multi-factor authentication to ensure that uh, even if your set of credentials are a set of credentials in the customer's environment are compromised, um, there is still protection available to ensure that those credentials are actually not used to compromise the organization's data and apps. Uh, conditional access that basically ensures that uh, you can define a pre-defined set of conditions and actions. Um, that will actually be taken or executed when a user attempts to access a specific application. And these conditional access policies can actually be application specific. Um, the next component is device health. So in conditional access itself, you can basically check for whether a device is domain joined or it's healthy before you actually grant access to applications. And then we actually have the risk-based conditional access dimension of things. So with that, once again, you can basically ensure that you're leveraging the intelligence of the intelligence security craft to basically protect against scenarios such as a user logging in from two uh, locations simultaneously and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of uh, protection we actually offer you at that identity vector level to protect against very advanced identity-related um, attacks. Okay, so the next vector is apps and data. Once again, we actually have a comprehensive set of capabilities that will basically allow you or enable you to protect apps and data. So in exchange online protection, we actually have uh, a continuous ability to scan emails. Um, so basically the way it actually works is that even when emails are received in your inbox, we'll actually uh, uh, keep scanning them. And if we deem that an email is malicious, we'll actually move it to the junk folder at that stage. So it's not only when the email is received, it's actually at uh, any time during the existence of that email in a specific mailbox. Um, we have advanced threat protection that actually protects you against very advanced attacks. So, you know, malware that's basically sent through attachments in an email um, and phishing attacks. We have threat intelligence that basically allows you to see how the global threat landscape is actually affecting your organization at that point in time. Then we have advanced security management, which will actually give you very advanced alerting and discovery of anomalous activity um, and suspicious activity in your organization. So the, the, between advanced threat protection, exchange online protection, threat intelligence, and um, advanced security management, <clears throat> we actually have a very comprehensive set of capabilities that you can actually use and deploy today to protect your apps and data vector against advanced threats. And then the protection extends to third-party apps. Um, so through cloud app security, we actually offer very similar capabilities as we actually do in Office 365 um, for your third-party SaaS applications. So uh, cloud app security will actually give you a very deep visibility into how your SaaS apps, and that, and that actually includes Office 365 as well. So you can actually use cloud app security to monitor Office 365 as well. In fact, advanced security management is basically a subset of the capabilities that you actually get through Cloud App Security. So Cloud App Security gives you a very high degree of visibility and control over what apps and how, what apps are actually being used in your organization and how those apps are actually being used. 
um, you have the capability of sanctioning apps or unsanctioning apps. So you can basically decide what apps should actually be or must actually be used in your organization. Um, it also allows you to put data sharing and data loss prevention controls um, in your third party SaaS app landscape. So that leads us to the device protection vector. <clears throat> so once again, we actually have a very comprehensive set of capabilities we offer at that device protection level. So you actually have the Windows Defender antivirus that basically protects you against advanced malware, um, you know, the, 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 the traditional um, uh, virus attacks that we actually used to see out in the field. But in this case, it's, it's much, much more advanced than what we actually used to see in traditional antivirus solutions because it actually leverages the power of the intelligent security graph as well. Then we actually have the smart screen filter in Windows 10. And that basically gives you protection against phishing attacks and malware attacks that are basically perpetrated through the browser. So this is a very powerful capability that we actually have uh, to stop attacks that are basically being perpetrated through, through the browser channel of disseminating attacks. And then we actually have Windows Defender um, Application Guard. And this basically gives you the ability to isolate parts of the operating system so that you actually uh, ensure that um, attacks actually don't get propagated um, across the whole operating system. Um, so it's basically an isolation technology. And then that brings us to some of the other advanced capabilities we actually have in Windows 10. So there's the device guard, and that's a very, very powerful uh, capability that basically gives you, um, you know, a, uh, if I may describe it like this, a virtual machine-like capability, um, which, bas which basically gives you a very high degree of isolation across the operating system. So if you basically visualize it like uh, a virtual machine in a data center, um, so we use the same virtualization paradigm inside Windows 10 to actually give you a very high degree of isolation so that even if a malware manages to land on that Windows 10 device, it's contained within a specific container. Um, so with uh, once again, with Device Guard, you can actually ensure that uh, you can control what apps actually run on the operating system. So Device Guard is basically, um, we used to have the technology before to control what apps can actually run on the, uh, on the machine. So Device Guard basically uh, complements that technology. Uh, so you can actually control to a very high extent what apps can actually run on the Windows 10 operating system and it actually works seamlessly with SCCM. Uh, Windows, uh, Windows Defender Exploit Guard basically protects against zero-day exploits. Um, so once again, it actually has some very advanced mitigation um, technology built into it as well. So it'll actually help you mitigate uh, advanced threats at a very, very rapid pace. So all these capabilities basically extend the capabilities that we actually have around antivirus and firewall on Windows, on Windows 10. Um, so uh, suffice it to say that with this comprehensive set of capabilities, we're actually looking at one of the most secure operating systems that has actually ever been created across the globe. Okay, so that actually brings us to distributed infrastructure protection. So uh, distributed infrastructure protection is all about ensuring that assets like virtual machines and storage and network distributed across the on-premises environment and in the cloud are actually protected at all times. So our solution for that is Azure Security Center that actually gives you protection and visibility across your on-premises environment and in the cloud. It's a very, very powerful piece of software. Um, and it actually gives you that unified view in a hybrid infrastructure model, which is something that's uh, very required when you're actually dealing with an environment that actually extends across uh, different geographies and different boundaries and across you know, the on-premises world and the cloud world. So that actually brings us to um, the three phases of um, of threat protection. Uh, so we've actually discussed the first one, which is all about protection. Um, so the second phase in that is the So once we've actually protected 
against threats once we've actually kept the threats out. How do we ensure that any threats that actually manage to sneak into our network or sneak into a customer's network are actually rapidly detected and that detection happens in a very timely manner? So once again, what we'll actually do is we'll basically walk through the different pieces of technology or the different components and solutions we actually have to detect threats and to help you uh, do that in a very, very time sensitive manner. So the first in that list is ATA and ATP. So advanced threat analytics and advanced threat protection, they're basically components um, of the EMS suite, enterprise mobility and security. ATA are EMS 3 and is part of EMS 5 so ATA is basically an on-premises component. It actually allows you to detect suspicious activity on-premises. It allows you to um, uh, view the suspicious activity from the lens of behavioral analysis. So what that basically means is that um, we'll actually create a behavioral model of the entities in your network. For example, that could be users, devices, and we'll actually proactively look for any deviations from that, those behavioral models. And if there are any de deviations detected, we'll actually give you a timeline view of what those deviations are. So we'll basically answer the question for you on the who and the when of the execution of the suspicious activity. Okay. So Cloud App Security is um, is, is uh, our cloud access security broker, as we uh, briefly discussed in the previous call, uh, previous webinar, and uh, as we'll actually be discussing a lot in this webinar as well. So that basically gives you the same degree of detection uh, based on behavioral analytic, any, sorry, behavioral analytics models um, and machine learning and artificial intelligence and um, you know a range of data that it actually collects from um, all these different third-party SaaS offerings or SaaS applications. It basically gives you the same degree of detection that ATA and ATP actually give you um, at, a, at a network security level. It actually gives you that level of protection at a third-party SaaS apps level. So Cloud App Security, um, if you please want to think about it like this, that whenever we talk Cloud App Security, we're actually talking about protecting a lot more than just the Microsoft ecosystem. We're actually talking about protecting the third-party SaaS ecosystem. So it can actually detect threats in the third-party SaaS apps that you might actually have um, in the cloud or on your network. Okay. Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection and Threat Intelligence, they basically allow you to detect threats at an Office 365 level. Um, and once again, very powerful capabilities. Threat intelligence is actually going to show you how your organization is actually faring against the global threat landscape. So it's actually going to show you how uh, or what global threats are active, what global threats exist today, and how is your environment or how is your uh, Office 365 tenancy faring against them. And Office 365 ATP, Advanced Threat Protection, will actually give you a range of reports that you can basically use to see whether your organization is um, completely protected against malware and phishing attacks and uh, a range of other attacks as well. Then we actually offer you the same degree of detection at a Windows level with Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection. Uh, it actually offers you a single cloud console that you can basically use. We actually offer you a six-month timeline for your security operations teams to actually come in and do detailed incident uh, analysis, and uh, we actually help you, as we'll discuss in the next couple of slides, to respond to incidents quite um, uh, promptly with Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection as well. And then that actually brings us to Azure Security Center. So once again, Azure Security Center actually allows you or enables you to detect threats across VMs and apps and data and infrastructure um, on premises and in the cloud. 
Um, so once again, a very powerful capability. You can basically see um, advanced threat intelligence reports. They'll basically show you, or they'll basically answer the question on why an attacker wanted to get into your network in the first place, so what were the key objectives, who the attacker actually was, and what did they actually manage to do while they basically broke into your network. So once again, very comprehensive capabilities from a detection perspective in Azure Security Center. Okay, so that actually brings us to the respond uh, section of this presentation on threat protection. Um, so once again, we'll actually go through a series of slides here, and uh, that'll actually give us the ability to sort of see how the different solutions that Microsoft actually offers fits into the threat protection uh, respond phase. So the first one, once again, is Advanced Threat Analytics and Azure Threat Protection, uh, Azure Advanced Threat Protection. So from a respond perspective, um, we actually give you a simple attack timeline that you can very quickly review. Um, we give you um, uh, lots of recommendations uh, through these tools, through Advanced Threat Analytics and Azure Advanced Threat Protection that you can basically take and you can uh, perform to remediate the threat that was actually executed in your environment. So once again, from a response perspective, ATA and ATP will actually help you significantly in responding to threats that are actually executed against the identity vector. So from a response perspective, Office 365 actually has lots of different tools as well. So I alluded, to, I alluded to it before, that Exchange Online Protection, it actually has this capability called Zero Hour Auto Purge. So it'll constantly look at emails landing in your mailbox, uh, in the mailbox of users in the organization um, to basically see what emails are suspicious at any given point in time. So it's not just about emails uh, that are actually being received. So basically, you know, the protection against malware as it actually arrives, it'll constantly scan mailboxes. And if it actually spots any uh, uh, suspicious email based on all the intelligence that we actually have in the intelligence security graph, it'll actually mark that email as such and move it to the junk folder. So we actually have the threat intelligence uh, in, in Office 365 threat intelligence. We actually have advanced incident response uh, related tools. They actually allow you to very rapidly respond to different threats that are basically being executed on your Office 365 tenancy. May those threats actually be phishing attacks, may there actually be um, malware campaigns or some other form of attack. Um, advanced security management is actually going to allow you to detect anomalous activity and any other suspicious activity that is actually being um, advanced security management also helps you to discover shadow IT in your organization. Um, and that's basically any apps that are interfacing with Office 365 that you may or may not know about. So it'll actually give you a nice visibility of all your shadow IT in the organization as well. Uh, as it actually applies to Office 365. And that's what I was actually saying earlier, that um, advanced security management is basically a subset of the capabilities that we actually offer through Cloud App Security. So that actually brings us to Cloud App Security. So Cloud App Security, once again, allows you to respond to threats in third-party SaaS applications, and even for that matter, Office 365, through the ASM capability quite rapidly. You can basically see um, uh, high risk usage. You can actually see anomalous activities. So there's a range of capabilities that it actually offers in one, detecting threats, and second, responding to threats very rapidly. Um, once again, it actually extends well beyond Office 365. So a whole plethora of third party SaaS applications can actually be protected with Cloud App Security. It actually has extensive reporting that you can basically use, and uh, it also has a very, very rich alerting mechanism that you can actually put in place to signal when there's suspicious activity detected or when there's anomalous activity detected um, or high-risk usage. Um, for example, sharing of a sensitive file that's actually been detected. Okay. That actually brings us to Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection uh, from a response perspective. So we actually have um, uh, the insights that you actually get through the Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection Console. That paired with the recommended actions that you actually see in the Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection Console. 
and the necessary tools that we actually offer you in the Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection. So you put these three things together and you actually have a very powerful response mechanism for any threats that are actually executed against your Windows machines in the organization. We do have a partner uh, called Sifton that basically offers you integration of Mac and Linux devices into Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection. So you can basically extend all of this goodness, not just to Windows devices, but um, Linux devices and Mac devices that uh, you manage the health of as well in your organization. So that partner is called Sifton. And please ping us if you actually need further information in that context about that partnership. Um, then finally, um, with Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, what we also give you is the security analytics dashboard. So this is a very new capability that actually came out with the Falls update. And um, I like to think of it like a secure score kind of a capability, like you have, like we have Office 365 secure score. So security analytics dashboard basically allows you to see the um, overall health of all your Windows 10 devices in the organization with the corresponding scores that um, the corresponding scores assigned per control. So, you know, how, are, how is your organization actually faring uh, against certain controls that are basically listed in the security analytics dashboard. So you can basically very, very quickly um, respond to any vulnerabilities spotted in your environment uh, through, that, through that specific tool. Okay. Okay, that actually brings us to the to, to responding to threats in the on the infrastructure vector. So Azure Security Center once again um, offers you a very rich set of capabilities to respond to threats very very rapidly. We actually have a prioritized set of alerts that you can basically configure, and uh, the prioritization will ensure that you actually get the correct alerts at the correct times. Um, we also offer you a very rich set of recommended actions that you can basically implement to ensure that you have a much more secure hybrid infrastructure across your on-premises and cloud investments. And then we actually have, as I mentioned before, the threat intelligence report <laughs> that you get as a part of the Azure Security Center, which basically gives you the who, the what, and the why, and the when of um, attacks being executed in your hybrid infrastructure. So I'll just do a very quick recap on the intelligent security graph. So um, the power of the intelligent security graph, you know, those 450 billion authentications and 400 billion um, web pages scanned and over a billion devices scanned, sorry, 400 billion emails scanned and over a billion devices scanned. The power of all of that, coupled with the fact that we actually have solutions that basically provide protection, detection, and response capabilities across devices, apps, data, and infrastructure. That is a very complete threat protection story. We believe that we actually have a very, very unique and a very complete threat protection story. And we would absolutely love for you to take this story to our customers. And if you actually need any further information about any aspect of threat protection, or any collateral uh, which will actually help you tell the story. We'll make this deck available to you with a range of other, um, you know, end-to-end -end demonstration videos and so on and so forth associated with threat protection. But we actually do have a lot more collateral as well. So please reach out if you actually need that. Yeah. Okay. So with that, we'll actually move to the next section of the presentation. Uh, so that's Microsoft Security Management. So security management is a very key area for um, ensuring that you actually have very effective security policies and controls that offer a very high degree of visibility into how you're actually faring in terms of security across your organization. Um, we believe we actually have a very comprehensive and compelling story there. And I'd actually like to take the opportunity to actually tell you that story over the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, before we actually get into what the security management story for Microsoft is, let me just describe a few key challenges that we're actually seeing in the security management space in our customer environments. Number one, many solutions. So there are hundreds of point solutions in security that the Fortune 500 companies typically actually have deployed to protect against a range of attacks on a, on a range of different vectors. You know, the, the vectors that we actually discussed before around identity and apps and data and infrastructure. 
there are many, 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 many point solutions that customers actually have to use today to basically protect on all of those different vectors. We're actually talking about customer environments that are actually distributed. So they're actually distributed across on-premises and in the cloud. So solutions that basically cater to on-premises and solutions that cater to cloud are typically different solutions. So this, it's very hard for customers to actually have a unified view of what security looks like across their entire uh, technology investment landscape. So there is no central console, or there's no central capability to basically view the overall health of the organization's security posture. And then you actually couple that with the fact that most of these point solutions actually come from different vendors and we're actually in a situation where you have many, many solutions from many, many different vendors managing different parts of the customer's security posture. So, you know, network security, uh, app security, data security, device security, identity security. And it's very, very hard for customers to basically leverage the learnings uh, about threats in one point solution, basically take those learnings and ensure that other point solutions protect against that specific threat that was actually detected. So it's a very, very fragmented landscape right now. And we believe that we actually have a very compelling story, a very unified, and a very integrated story um, th that I'm actually going to present to you over the next 15, 20 minutes that basically addresses each of these different challenges. <clears throat> okay. So these are some of the imperatives that we actually hear from customers. So what really are the imperatives of a very effective security management strategy? So there's essentially four areas that we actually need to protect against, as I alluded to before. So there's the identity space, there's the devices and endpoint space, there's the apps and data space, and then there's the infrastructure space, right? So these are the four different um, areas or the four different attack vectors that we actually need to protect against. So what really should be the three or four key tenets that customers actually need to implement to ensure that all these four different spaces are protected. So the first one, the first one is visibility. Customers actually need to be able to view what the security posture like in, in an organization actually looks like. So for example, they actually need the visibility into their apps and into their data to actually see how these apps and data are actually being used and if there is any, in fact, suspicious activity that's basically being detected across these apps and data. So that's the visibility component. The control component is all about ensuring that there are adequate and appropriate and effective security policies in place. And these security policies are implemented in a way that vital controls are actually put in place to ensure that, that if, even when the data breach actually happens, it's taken care of in a very timely manner or it's actually protected right at the outset through effective controls. <clears throat> and then guidance is basically about ensuring that once the visibility is provided to the customer and the security policies and the associated controls are implemented, there is additional intelligence and recommendations that are actually being provided by the intelligence security management framework or technology set to ensure that the security posture is actually hardened further. So what is our value proposition in this context? We actually believe we have a set of solutions that basically span visibility, control, and guidance. So we actually cover all three facets of intelligent security management. So over the next few slides, I'll actually walk you through the range of solutions and how they basically address these different three areas, these three different areas in visibility, control, and guidance, um, and how we then sort of bring them all together through the intelligent security craft to give you a very, very compelling story around intelligent security management. Okay, so some of the key aspects of the Microsoft Intelligent Security Management story are as follows. So I'll actually just pull out a couple of very key ones, right? We actually offer an extremely integrated intelligent security management capabilities. For example, when a threat is detected anywhere in the world through those 450 billion authentications and 400 billion email scanned and 1 billion odd identities in, you know, in our consumer and our, uh, uh, in our corporate identity systems, 
We basically bring all of that intelligence in a very integrated manner to all our consoles. So Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection will basically leverage that. Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection will leverage that. So will Threat Intelligence and so will Advanced Threat Analytics, right? So it's a very, very integrated story. Although it's an integrated story, we actually do offer separate consoles because we understand that the technology landscape today or the organizational compositions uh, today are actually such that we have dedicated security teams that basically work on different areas. So for example, you might actually have a dedicated security team for device level security. You might have a dedicated security team for app level security. You might actually have a different team for risk and a different team for records management and so on and so forth. So we basically provide you different consoles that you can actually apply granular controls to for the specific teams in your organization. So it's very, very highly customizable and uh, it's very organizational context specific. Um, all our systems, all our components that I'm actually going to talk to talk to you about over the next few minutes, they basically intelligence share. So if one system learns something, that learning will actually be passed on to the rest of the system. So if Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection learns something new, that will actually be passed into the intelligence security graph, which will actually then pass it into the advanced threat analytics and Azure advanced threat protection office 365 ATP subsystems. <coughs> so let's start with visibility first. What exactly is visibility? Let's just quickly define it. So visibility is all about ensuring that customers actually have a very clear view of how the security posture of their organization looks, and that actually is across devices. So how is the device health in their organizations? How do all the Windows devices look through Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection or Linux and Mac devices through the partnership that I actually mentioned to you before through Sifton? Or how do the apps and data actually look in Office 365 and all the third-party SaaS applications? So visibility is all about ensuring that customers actually have a set of consoles which are customized for their specific teams, the composition of their teams. And they also have a capability of viewing that information in a unified way when required. So let's talk about uh, visibility from uh, you know on the on the on the basis of each of the attack vectors that we discussed before. So let's start with identity first. So what does visibility really look like with identity? Um, with Azure Active Directory, we actually offer you a range of reports. We actually offer you access reports. We actually offer you usage reports. We offer you security reports. Very comprehensive set of uh, security capabilities that you get, or security reporting capabilities that you get with Azure Active Directory. We also offer you advanced security reporting that comes as a part of Azure AD Premium P1 or P2. There's a very rich set of uh, APIs we actually offer. You can basically use these APIs to integrate your SIEM solutions, for example, Splunk, with all of this usage reporting and security reporting. So if your organization or if your customer's organization actually needs a unified view of all the information from Office 365 and Azure AD in their SIEM solutions, because they're actually getting information from other sources into their SIEM solutions as well, and they actually treat that as the, as the um, you know, single, single source of truth, we can absolutely do that. We actually have a very comprehensive set of APIs that you can actually leverage today to integrate Azure AD usage and security reporting into your SIEM solution like Splunk. Then we actually offer privileged identity management. So with privileged identity management, you can actually view what privileged roles are actually in use in your organization. So who are these roles assigned to? And then you can actually put a regime in place to ensure that there is a very clear workflow around when people actually need access to um, uh, privileged roles. So for example, um, there's a specific incident or there's a specific um, admin need and user X basically needs privileged access. So you can basically take user X through a workflow um, and in that workflow, someone can actually approve the request and that uh, specific privileged role, admin role, for example, a global admin role, can actually be assigned to that user for that predefined amount of time. And then it will actually be automatically revoked once the user has actually done the task and the time has expired. <coughs> so a very comprehensive set of capabilities to actually view the privileged uh, role assignment in your organization and the general usage and security um, incidents or events happening in your organization in the identity attack vector space. 
Okay, that actually brings us to device visibility. So we actually have in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, this is a new capability. It's called the Security Analytics Dashboard. Um, I alluded to this before. It actually gives you, um, I like to think of it like a secure score kind of an inter interface. Um, you know, like we actually have secure score for Office 365, um, although the interface doesn't look exactly like that, but it, it's a very similar principle. So we'll actually give you a series of controls and we'll basically rate the health of your Windows devices against those controls. And it will give you a very clear of recommendations that you can basically follow to tighten or to improve the security uh, baseline of your Windows machines in your organization. And you can extend that to Linux and Mac machines through Zifton. Um, we also give you in the security analytics dashboard itself, we actually give you a comparison to your industry peers. So for example, if you're actually in the banking industry, um, you know, your scoring uh, can actually be made or will be made specific to that specific industry. So, so there's a lot of industry specific intelligence you can actually gain from that as well. That actually brings us to apps and data visibility. Uh, so there's a very high degree of visibility we actually have built into Office 365. So Office 365 audit logs are something that you can actually access for 90 days. If you need to access audit logs for Office 365 for greater than 90 days, then we actually encourage you to use the Office 365 Management Activity API. It's a very comprehensive set of capabilities uh, wrapped in an API that basically allows you to extract the same information that we surface to you in the Office 365 audit log for ingestion into SIEM solutions, for example, Splunk. Uh, so it's a very, it's it's quite a mature API now, the Management Activity API. It's actually been in existence for over 18 months. So um, what you'll actually find is you'll actually find apps from most of the major SIEM providers for the Office 365 Management Activity API today, uh, for example, Splunk. We also give you comprehensive reporting in Office 365 uh, around usage and security. Um, uh, the, those reports basically leverage and can pivot on the specific bits of data stored in the Office 365 audit log. Uh, so very comprehensive set of reporting that you can actually access through either the admin consoles for the respective services, for example, Exchange, SharePoint, Skype Business Teams, or through the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. And our recommendation always is to view reporting through the Security and Compliance Center, because going forward, that's where most of our reporting investments are going from an interface perspective. <coughs> then we also have advanced security management in Office 365, and that basically gives you proactive alerting, so you can actually configure alerts um, on specific events, anomalous activity, and so on and so forth, and, um, and it can proactively alert you when those events happen. So a very high degree of visibility and alerting. That actually brings us to infrastructure. Um, so once again, through the Azure Security Center uh, and OMS, we'll actually offer you a very high degree of visibility across your virtual machines, uh, Azure storage on-premises storage, and network, and data, and apps, and so on and so forth. Um, an example is that if a virtual machine is not uh, properly patched, if it's a Windows Server virtual machine and it's not properly patched, we'll actually flag that. So there's a very rich set of recommendations and visibility we'll actually give you for all these different assets across virtual machines and apps and data, data and um, uh, storage and so on and so forth. Okay, so that actually brings us to the second area of intelligent security management, security management, and that's control. So what exactly is control? This area is all about one, the formulation of very clear clear security policies. So, you know, this is what we actually expect the policies to be to address the organization's security requirements. And then the implementation of very, very clear controls that basically implement the gist of those policies or the, um, you know, the essence of those policies in the tools and uh, technologies that we actually offer. So over the next few slides, once again, I'll actually walk you through the different solutions we actually have to implement this control phase in the intelligent security management area. Okay, so the first vector identity, let's 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 uh, see what different controls we actually have on the in the identity space or on the identity attack vector. 
We have capabilities like conditional access, multi-factor authentication, privileged identity management that we've actually been talking about. Uh, so they actually offer you a very high degree of control. You can actually define a predefined set of conditions with conditional access, as um, we discussed at length in the previous webinar. Uh, these conditions could be based on the health of the device. It could be based on the location. It could be based on uh, a range of other factors, especially when you actually bring in risk-based conditional access. Um, which could actually be impossible travel scenarios and uh, you know deemed suspicious activity and so on and so forth. <coughs> so conditional access gives you a very high capability of enforcing um, access that is limited or that is uh, controlled or, or you know, for example, multi-factor authentication or just limited access, for example, limiting access to SharePoint online when a device is not, uh, you know, directly managed by an organization or domain joint um, so that a user can't really mass download documents which are from SharePoint online but can actually view documents in a very limited context. So those kind of controls are actually all baked into the Azure AD conditional access policy. We actually have a very high degree of integration between cloud app security and the Azure AD conditional access framework specifically for things like limited access. Um, so for example when you implement the limited access control to, let's say, an application like SharePoint Online. Azure AD Conditional Access will pass on the control to Cloud App Security, which will then limit the access by deploying or by routing the traffic through the Cloud App Security forward proxies. Uh, Risk-based conditional access we've already discussed, so that basically gives you, uh, that, that basically leverages machine learning and artificial intelligence and our learnings from across the globe to basically elevate or de-elevate the risk levels of users. And then you can basically have controls defined on the risk level of that specific user. So that basically brings us to uh, the, the, the control at the device level. Or the or you know on the device vector, whatever we actually choose to call it, um, we actually have once again quite a few different tools and technologies available for you to implement controls. Um, so first of all, you can actually configure all security controls in Windows 10 machines with SCCM and Intune, so that will give you very very comprehensive control over or con comprehensive uh, configuration of your. Um, of all the devices, of all the Windows devices that actually exist in your organization. Um, so once again, in terms of control, um, there's actually a very high degree of control. Uh, you can basically order quite a few different controls. You can actually implement in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, uh, which is just one unified cloud console where you actually implement all the controls from. So one, you can actually configure all the security policies and uh, um, you know, so on and so forth on Windows devices through SCCM or Intune, depending on whether you're actually in an environment that's SCCM Intune hybrid or you've gone completely Azure AD joint slash Intune managed or SCCM managed slash Active Directory joint um, through the core management capability. And we also offer you a full, very rich set of controls in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection. <clears throat> So then we actually get to apps and data control. Um, there's a very rich set of uh, apps and data control we actually offer in Office 365 through the Security and Compliance Center. Um, uh, let me just give you a few examples of these kind of controls. So we have data loss prevention controls. You can actually apply data governance policies so that you basically say, right, um, from a data governance standpoint, these are the different labels I'm actually defining. And then based on the labels applied to information in um, in the Office 365 tenancy, these are the different data loss prevention controls I'm actually going to apply to it. We also have Secure Score, um, which like Windows Defender Security Analytics dashboard, is a very nice dashboard that basically shows you the health score for your Office 365 tenancy, and it'll actually give you very clear recommendations when you click on each of the controls uh, to basically um, you know, take you up a level on your security score. So you can basically improve your security score in the secure score by following the rich set of recommendations we actually give you for each of the each of the recommendations we actually provide. <coughs> So that actually brings us to infrastructure control. Uh, once again, 
through Azure Security Center, we actually offer you a very rich framework for implementing policies and controls. Um, we actually give you um, recommendations on uh, what rec recommended configurations you should actually apply to resources within a particular subscription or you know the, the, the different subscriptions that you're actually managing. We actually have many, many built-in controls that you can actually apply through Azure Security Center as well. So suffice it to say, it's a very rich set of controls you can basically apply using the Azure Security Center to your VMs, apps, data, and uh, infrastructure on premises and in the cloud. So that actually brings us to the final topic in intelligent security management, and it's all around guidance. So once you've actually provided the visibility to different apps and data and devices and infrastructure, and you actually have the security policies clearly articulated and controls implemented that basically communicate the essence of these security policies. Then the final piece of the puzzle is guidance. So over the next few slides, I'll actually just walk you through how we basically address this dimension of guidance through each of the tools that we actually have available for you in the intelligent security management space. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the identity guidance first. So with identity guidance, we basically give you a whole raft of recommendations on how you can basically fine tune your identity infrastructure. The risk-based conditional access um, uh, capability is one of the examples of that. We actually have a very rich set of APIs as well that you can basically use to extract um, information pertaining to all the recommendations we have for you in the identity space for Azure Active Directory identity protection. So we have APIs available for Azure Active Directory identity protection related data extraction as well. <clears throat> so that actually brings us to device guidance. So once again, if we actually look at the security analytics dashboard capability in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, we'll actually give you a lot of very proactive guidance on um, how you can actually further fine tune your environment. Um, uh, if you actually follow those recommendations, you'll actually see the scores, uh, the score in your dashboard actually elevating for those specific elements and the overall score elevating. Uh, so once again, it, it's not just about us actually giving you the visibility into these different attack vectors and not just us giving you the ability to apply controls into these different vectors to ensure that you keep the hackers out. It's also about us proactively bringing the intelligence that we're actually gathering in the intelligence security graph across the world uh, from all those numerous you know, broad and deep signals um, to all these different tools for you to actually be able to then harden your security posture further. <laughs> okay. So that actually, so, so, so then, then we actually get into the space of apps and data guidance. Um, if you if you log on to protection.office.com, that's the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center, you'll actually find a lot of great guidance on what you can actually do in the Office 365 tenancy at that point in time to harden the security posture. We do have the secure score tool as well that you can actually use um, to view the uh, health of your Office 365 tenancy, as I actually mentioned before. Um, so yeah, so suffice it to say, there's actually quite a bit of information we actually make available to you in the way of um, uh, improving how your security is actually faring for your Office 365 tenancy. So that actually brings us to infrastructure guidance then. Um, uh, through the Azure Security Center, uh, we actually give you a lot of recommendations, and these recommendations are actually based on the immense machine learning that we actually bring to you through the Azure Security Center. We actually give you elements like security baselines for virtual machines. Um, we give you investigation tools and those threat intelligence reports that I actually alluded to before that basically give you uh, the who, what, when, and why of the attacks being executed in your environment. So um, I'll just take a few seconds to just quickly recap and bring this entire story together. So the intelligence security graph, which I'm sure by now you've actually heard too much about, <laughs> um, is that central clue 
that carries the intelligence, the deep and broad intelligence signals from across the globe. Um, it's not just our systems that basically input security intelligence into it. It's all the partnerships that we actually have in the industry as well, including law enforcement. We actually bring all of the intelligence of the intelligent security graph um, through our intelligent security management tools that I actually just described. So, um, um, you know, <clears throat> Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection, um, Azure Threat Analytics, and so on and so forth, across the different areas or dimensions of intelligent security management and visibility control and guidance. So it's a very, very integrated and a very complete value proposition around intelligent security management. Okay, so we've discussed um, over the last couple of webinars, so the last webinar and this webinar, we've discussed identity and access management, we've discussed information protection, uh, we started with threat protection in this presentation, and then we actually went into intelligent security management. For each of these different areas, we described the key challenges, we described the, the contingent areas or spaces that actually compose these different areas. For example, for threat protection, it was protect, detect, respond. For intelligent security management, it was visibility, control, and guidance. And then we actually described all the tools that basically address these different contingent areas in the four major areas that actually compose our end-to-end -end security story. So we've actually gone through a lot of information over the last couple of webinars. Um, I'm actually just going to mention very quickly a few very, very key distinguishers for the Microsoft security story as it actually compares to the rest of our partners. Um, partners and competitors. One, we actually reduce the need for point solutions. So with one integrated security story, you can basically address all of these different scenarios across all the four different areas. Um, all our tools actually share intelligence across the board. So it's not a fragmented um, security story or for fragmented uh, point solution offering that we actually offer you. And we actually offer you end-to-end -end visibility, control, and guidance, again, across all your environments. So may that be on-premises, your devices, your apps, your data, and your infrastructure. Now, it's very easy to get started. Um, after this webinar, we'll actually make available to you the decks for both the webinars, uh, the end-to-end -end demonstrations associated to these four different areas, and a whole raft of additional resources. If you need to get in touch with us, um, you know where to find us. You can actually post your questions on the Microsoft Australia Partner Yemen Network or reach out to me directly, kenny.sing at microsoft.com. Uh, we'd absolutely love to field any questions from you and answer them as quickly as we possibly can. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity to tell you the Microsoft integrated security story. Thank you.